The trial of Ashley Benefield is coming to a close. Heck, by the time you uh, see this or listen to this, we may already have a verdict. But as we're recording this, it's Friday, and Direct uh, is uh, wrapping up on her. We're going to see Cross here shortly. Joining me to discuss, Bob Mata, defense attorney. Uh, what's been your reaction? You've been covering it on uh, your channel, so Defense Diaries, uh, which everyone should go and check out. Download the podcast, go to the Twitter, all that. Uh, but uh, what's been your reaction so far uh, to Ashley's testimony this morning? Uh, I was of the mindset initially, you know, and I have to look at it in, in conjunction with what I thought was a very weak case that the state put on, it's just my opinion yeah, on it. Sure. Um, you know, but in conjunction with that, I believed her. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, you know, I, I know that there's two very divided sides on this. I, I just felt like she was being truthful you know people are like i don't see tears i don't see tears she's fake it you know and it's like i think that people what i started to see in our chat like on our youtube channel when we're streaming it is that we have a very divided like we did a poll and it was i think 52 believed 52 percent believed her and 48 thought she was lying you know mm -hmm. that this is all part of the, the scam um and i just felt that it was genuine, yeah. but what I what I had a problem with from the the from Taylor the attorney's perspective is I think that he should have built up the pattern of abuse and coercive control by Doug that had taken place preceding this. I, I thought that that was so important. He did it in the inverse. He he did that after after she kind of like he got right into tell us what happened mm -hmm. that night. You know, mm -hmm. and just in terms of context, I I would have probably, and I'm I'm sure he thought about it. You know, because when you're preparing your direct of your your witness, especially when it's the defendant, and especially in a self defense case, you know that that was a highly prepped uh, direct examination, and he thought about what the best approach going into it was, and he must have landed on. I think that we go into the event. And then we'll leave the jury with all of the other things leading up to it that led to, to you shooting him. Um, so may, maybe it'll be effective because remember, <clears throat> in a self-defense case, you're almost always going to have to have the defendant testify. Mm -hmm. Like, like it, 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 it's, it's very difficult for me to, to figure out a way to where I'm able to prove that her actions or my client's actions were reasonable without putting them on the stand mm -hmm. to give their mindset of what was going through their head at the time. Yeah. And, and in a case like this where you have admitted behavior by Doug in his deposition where he talks about, yes, I shot a, a, you know, a gun into the ceiling of our home. Yes. I threw a gun through the, you know, the kitchen wall and left a huge hole. Yes. I punched the dog in the face and knocked it out. You know, I mean, like those things matter because yeah. all of that is the context for that individual. It's not, what do you think is reasonable? It's, is it reasonable to think in her mind that her life would be in danger in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's the, the, the sure. question that's being posed to the jury. Not, it's not like a reasonable person standard in general. No. It's considering everything that she's gone through with this guy, you know, in that moment of time, was it reasonable to believe that Doug might kill her or seriously injure her? Yeah. And you know, my opinion is yes. Yeah, I mean, and with the, I mean, that's basically the definition of the battered spouse syndrome. That is exactly what it is. It's, it's not, uh, it's not through someone else's prism looking in on the outside, going, was he really a danger? Did you need to shoot him? You have to look at everything that she was considering in her mind to exactly. make that determination. And based on what we're hearing here, I would agree. Um, I, I think she did feel that. Um, there was a lot of interesting bombshells that I thought were dropped, and I'm kind of surprised they weren't dropped earlier in the trial to really you know, up the context of this, but they're certainly making their impact right now. One of those being uh, his ex-wife and the text oh, messages man, that, was it for me. That, uh, that she found. Um, I want to talk about that, but I also want to talk about validating those sort of things. Um, the, the text messages themselves, uh, what is being claimed here, 
uh, is that uh, essentially uh, the ex-wife had uh, sent Doug a text telling him how hurt she was that on their honeymoon, he kicked her very hard in bed, basically because he couldn't get it up. His Viagra wasn't working. Uh, he was embarrassed about talking about it. Uh, and then also secretly recorded them having sex. Um, pretty kind of, that's not going to play well to any any human being on that jury, especially the women uh, on that jury. And, and I'm assuming, you know, this is this has nothing to do with Ashley. This is just a piece of the past that's uh, coming together to help contextualize Doug was a different person behind closed doors. Exactly. I, uh, that, to me, that was an absolute bombshell. Like you said, I, I felt it was the biggest bombshell in the entire trial because uh, it it put everything into context. I, I have because I was saying I hope that the defense is able to get Renee's former best friend, whoever that may have been, because Renee is deceased and mm -hmm. Renee is Doug's yeah. ex-wife who's passed. Yeah. Um, you know, but that, and I don't even know if they were divorced. I don't know if she just passed away or if they. Divorced I believe she just passed her. away. Um, she just yeah. passed away. You know, because we had heard uh, Eva on the stand saying, you know, that her her father was always wonderful mm -hmm. with with Renee, and that there was a, a a very positive relationship, and there was no signs of any of this kind of stuff. So this really kind of puts Eva's testimony in question in terms of what her father was really like. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, it was absolutely huge because, like I was saying, I, I would have loved to to see the defense subpoena uh, Renee's, whoever her best friend was, mm -hmm. because her best friend's going to know. Yeah, Her best friend's going to know what was going on in that relationship. And if this was a pattern yeah. with Doug prior to, because people just don't turn into abusers overnight. No, no. You know, they're they're typically either they were abused themselves or they were in an abusive household or they have something going on mentally. But it, it, it's typically not just like the flip of a switch and I'm abusive. Yeah, it's, it's a pattern. It's something that that exists in that person and it, it it ebbs and it flows and, you know, they they master it and they become more coercive. And, and so like all those things. So when that that messaging came out at trial, man. It just, it like that, that it like, I was already believing Ashley. Mm -hmm. And then when that came out, I completely believed her. Sure. Everything she was saying it, it's like, and I I've been, I've handled plenty of domestic relation cases in my, in my 20 plus years. And I have seen over and over and over where women are begging law enforcement, begging the system to help them. And they just, don't get the help if they're you know they'll call in try to have an arrest made they'll you know even in in this case where there was a, a mutual stay away order or a protective order in place like when he was violating and she'd call the police and then they wouldn't do anything about mm -hmm. it it was like i i just i i like you, you never want to like have a situation end up like this but like i, I just believe her i i just believe that it, at this point in time with everything that had gone on prior to that this had just reached in her mind the point where Doug was going to snap. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. really do. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.